number one, I'm going to discuss the different definitions and different composition of soil. For the first definition, soil can be defined as a dynamic natural body composed of mineral and organic solids, gases, liquids, and living organisms, which can serve as a medium for plant growth. Another definition of the soil is that it is a valuable, non-renewable natural resource capable of supporting plant growth and has the properties resulting from the integrated effects of climate and living organisms acting upon its parent material as conditioned by topography over periods of time. You can notice that the five highlighted words in here are the five soil forming factors that you can call CLORPT for short. CLORPT stands for C as a climate, LO for living organisms, R for relief or topography, P for parent material, and T for time. So another definition of soil is that it is a complex biogeochemical material on which plants may grow, having structural and biological properties that distinguish them from materials from which it normally originates. So understanding soils and managing them well are essential to human welfare, not only for agriculture, but also for other industries. There are eight fields of study in soil science. The first one is soil chemistry. This is a branch of soil science that deals with the chemical composition, the chemical properties, and the chemical reactions of the soil. We also have soil conservation and management. This one deals with the best practices in using and preserving the soil. Another is soil fertility. This one deals with the amount of available essential nutrients for plant growth. Another one is the soil micro microbiology. Soil micro microbiology is the study of organisms in the soil, their functions, and how they affect the soil properties. So that's the first four. Another one is soil mineralogy. This one is concerned with the inorganic minerals found in the soil and also the depth of weathering. We also have soil physics. This is the study of the state and movement of energy and mass in the continuum that includes the soil, the plants, and the surface boundary layer of the atmosphere. We also have soil survey and classification. This is a systematic study of the soil of an area, including the classification and mapping of the properties and the distribution of various soil units. And the last one, but not the least, is the land use. Land use is the study of the various ways in which human beings, us, make use and manage the land and its resources. Moving further, let us now look on the different soil components. There are four soil components, which are the air, the water, the mineral matter, and organic matter. In terms of composition by volume, mineral matter comprises the 45%. Organic matter is 5%. The remaining 50% include 
the pore space, wherein 25% is air and 25% is water. That is for an ideal soil. For example, this one is a pie chart for an ideal soil. We have 45% uh, mineral matter, 5% organic matter, 25% water, and 25% air. That is for an ideal soil again. During the dry season, the soil might be dried up because of insufficient water or insufficient rainfall. And because of that, the soil might have 45% of air and 5% only for water. On the other hand, during the wet season, especially if the soil is prone to water lagging, the soil will have 45% water and only 5% for air. Now, let's Let's take a look deeper on each soil components. First, for the minerals or the mineral matter. Minerals can be derived from the weathering of rocks. They are derived from the weathering of rocks in which clay minerals are the most important weathering products. So the minerals is actually the inorganic component of the soil comprising the sand, the silt, and the clay fractions. So minerals comprises or comprise more than 90% of the soil solids. These are the three major fractions of the soil. The sand particles having a size of 2 to 0 0.05 millimeters. The silt particles having 0 0.05 to 0 0.002 millimeters. And the clay particles that are smaller than 0 0.002 millimeters. So that is the mineral matter. Now we move to the soil organic matter. Soil organic matter or SOM or OM encompasses all the organic components of the soil. That is from the fresh residues, from the decomposing organic matter, the stable organic matter, and living organisms. So this is the distribution by volume of the soil organic matter components. So the fresh residue is about less than 10%. An example of fresh residue are... Residues are the fresh fallen leaves. For the decomposing organic matter, or in other words, the active fraction of the organic matter, it can comprise the 33 to 50% of the organic matter. So example of this is the actively decomposing animal manure. Another composition is the stable organic matter or what we call the humus. When you say stable, meaning it is completely decomposed. And its uh, composition by volume is 33 to 50%. Another one is the living organisms, which comprises less than 5% of the organic matter. Another component of the soil is the soil water. Soil water, or in other words, or in other terms, can be called a soil solution. So this one contains the soluble salts, the organic solutes, the suspended colloids. And this component of the soil is largely controlled by uh, the pore size or the pore spaces. So the small pores have a great affinity for water. Small pores would be um, micropores or mesopores. And the large pores or the macropores allow water to escape easily. Now, 
Now, this component of the soil also contains a small but significant quantities of soluble inorganic compounds. So, these are actually the uh, essential elements for plant growth. There are 18 essential elements for plant growth that can be generally divided into two. First, we have the macro elements. We have those that could be coming from the air, such as carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. And we have those that could come from the soil. We have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, potassium, magnesium, and sulfur. These macro elements coming from the soil could be in combination with other compounds. It could be found in the complex structure of minerals or in salts in the soil solution. Another are the micro elements. This includes the iron, manganese, copper, zinc, boron, molybdenum, cobalt, chlorine, and nickel. So what's the difference between macro and micro elements? Macro elements are those nutrient elements that are needed by the plants in large amounts. While the micro elements are those nutrients needed by the plants in minimal amounts. So water soil solution is also an indicator of the soil pH or the soil acidity or alkalinity. This one is the critical property of the soil solution because the most or the important chemical and biological reactions in the soil depends on the levels of the hydrogen and hydroxyl ions. And this chemical and biological reactions can influence the solubility or availability of several essential elements for plant growth. Let us now move to the last component of the soil, which is the soil air. Soil air has more carbon dioxide but less oxygen than the atmosphere. That is because of the respiration process. Respiration of the soil organisms causing um, more carbon dioxide present in the soil but less oxygen. Respiring organisms in the soil consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. Another characteristic of the soil air is that it has a relative humidity near 100% always. That is because of again respiration. Respiration releases water which evapor evaporates more slowly in the soil than on or above the soil. That's all for the different definitions and different components of the soil. Thank you for watching.